What up, YouTube? You already know, Big Lou, tapping back in with what it do with Big Lou, NFZR2, baby, baby. Uh, so, this is a little video, as you can tell from the thumbnail. Uh, this is about the American bully. Um, I recently got me a, a puppy, female puppy. She's about five months old. She's big. Well, she's almost close to six months old now, about another week. But well, she's big. 55 pound dog already at, at, at that age. So her parents are 150, 140, 150 pound male. There's her father. His name is sickness. And her mother is named mama June. She's about 125 pound, 120 pound dog. So they would be considered as far as the ABKC is concerned, which it stands for the American bully kennel club. They are considered XL extra large bullies, American bullies. Um, some people refer to them as double XL because of their height and weight. Uh, so you're talking about anything, uh, height wise on a male, like 23 inches from the withers. And if anybody don't know, the withers are basically above where the shoulder is. There's that muscle that's above or not above, but, uh, right to the left or uh, the left of the shoulder and a little bit above it. That's the wither. Um, uh, so for a double XL to be considered double XL uh, in the bully community would be like 23 inches tall on a male. It's not so much the weight that matters when it comes to the sizes of the dogs. And as you can see in the thumbnail, you have the pocket bully, which are the real short ones with the very short legs. And they look a lot more like a bulldog in the face. Tongue's always hanging out. They always have that 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 breathing issue. Um, and then you have the classic uh, which is a little bit bigger, resembles more like a like a old school pit bull in a sense. And then you got the standard and then you have the XL. So again, like I mentioned, you'll hear me sometimes say double XL American bully, but technically as far as the kennel clubs are concerned, the ABKC and there's a few other ones. My dog is ABKC registered. Um, uh, I have uh, pictures of both her parents. I got pictures of her grandparents on both sides and then her papers, her pedigree. I have like six or seven generations back of her bloodline, family members, uh, you know, great grandparents, great, great grandparents, great, 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 great grandparents and such. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, it depends what you want to, you know, your dog when you get when you get these dogs, you know, you got pet quality, which is, you know, uh, basically what the breeders guarantee you that they're healthy puppies. You know what I mean? A lot of times they'll give them a, a health check um, and uh, things like that, um, which is, you know, like I said, pet quality. Then you also have a, a show, show quality. And basically that's, you know, like everything, their bone structure, their uh, their stance, you know what I mean? Their head, their uh, uh, everything's pretty much proportional in the way it's supposed to be when you show your dog. So your high rear, you know, high rears, uh, east to west, that means east to west is when their feet, when they're standing there, their feet will be one way and then the other foot will be that way. That's considered east to west. So if your dog does that, that's no good uh, as far as show quality. And then you, you, what you want to do is, you know, when you do that, you, you want to try to correct, correct that. We'll do other videos on that later, but you want to try to correct, correct that. Then you got stifles, 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 excuse me, stifles. I think I didn't pronounce it right. Uh, then you got, uh, uh, higher rears, uh, you know, the, which is, uh, their back, you know, cause you want them when they stand, you want them, that hind leg goes back a certain way, uh, you know, when you show them, um, underbite, over, underbite, overbite, all that stuff is all looked at when it comes to, uh, uh, show quality dogs, kink tails. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, and so a lot of times you can tell with these puppies by a certain age, you can tell if they're going to be, uh, you know, cause obviously they got to be trained to be show and, you know, to be showed. Um, but you can tell, you know what I mean? When a, a dog got good structure, um, their bone, you know what I mean? All that stuff you can tell when they're younger, you know, three, probably by three, four months. Um, and so these are different, uh, when it comes to their dogs on the prices, you know, uh, pet qualities going to be pretty much uh, at a certain price you know when the breeders are selling their pups and then uh, uh show quality is going to be more you know a female puppy usually costs more than a male puppy uh and then if you get a certain color like a merle color 
uh, a lot of times that'll up the ante on the price too. You know what I'm saying? So it is, it takes, there's a lot of stuff when it comes to just like with everything else, you got to learn. Um, and you got to, not only you learn, but if you're going to do that, you got to put it to, you know, put it to test. You got to put it, you got to implement it in your program. If you're going to become a, bre a breeder and, you know, have a kennel and all that, you gotta, you gotta make sure that, uh, you're honest at all times with, with the buyers, you know what I mean? And cause if you're not, it's going to bite you in the ass, especially nowadays with the social media. Uh, you start doing janky deals with people and not holding your word. Um, believe that, that they'll, they will come out saying, Hey, don't buy no dogs from this guy. This guy is straight full of crap. His word is nothing. Uh, he sells, uh, shite, uh, he's a shiesty individual, shady cat. You know, he sells, uh, uh, under par, um, dogs, you know, pups and blah, you know, it just goes on and on. So, always be honest it's just the best thing to do and be in life when it comes to business be honest about things you know what i mean but um the the american so they they call it so the dogs uh if you look at like the xl uh, dogs you know the original pit bulls the american pit bull terrier and also the uh, staffordshire terriers uh the original the original standards for these breeds were like for a male like 60 pounds tops for a male um probably about uh probably like 18 inches from the withers 17 inches from the withers probably um same thing with the uh uh staffordshire terrier um you know they weren't built yeah they had they were muscular they had muscles but it was more like uh if you compare it to people it was kind of more like a bruce lee type you know where bruce lee was cut up like a mug but he wasn't big like yoked you know he was cut up he had a lot of muscles and it was he had a lot of definition but it was you know he was a small man right so that's how the american pitbull terrier and the staffordshire terriers are more you know there's the size is supposed to be so if a male is supposed to be you know 50 to 60 pounds tops you know 17 18 inches from the withers a female is going to be an inch or two shorter and then also probably 10 15 pounds less um and those are original pit bulls. So when, you know, when you, people see the bullies and they always call them, uh, pit bulls, you know what I mean? But they, they're not, you know, these dogs, if you do DNA tests on these dogs, they're going to come out with, yeah, of course they have American pit bull terrier in them or Staffordshire terrier in them, but then they're also going to have, uh, uh, American or, uh, English bulldog, um, uh, American bulldog, uh, you know, massive, uh, barbel. I don't know how to pronounce that one exactly right. Borbell or something like that. Um, they'll, they'll have those dogs in their, in their bloodline as well as, uh, even some too, cause the different colors that we're getting now, they're having like tries. Uh, also you'll see the around here by their eyes down here by their mouth, a little bit on their paws. They'll have that rust color, like a, um, like a Rottweiler or a Doberman. And so somewhere down the line, they were introducing Rottweilers to the breeding program to get that, those colors, you know what I mean? Uh, on these American bullies. Cause if you look back, uh, when you're, if you're all wearing the dogs when you're a kid or, or some point in your life, when you look at the American pit bull terrors, the Staffordshire terrors, it was pretty cut and dry. The colors, right? It was either white, black, white and black, uh, brown, uh, kind of reddish color, right? Orangish reddish color, uh, and then a little bit later after that, you started seeing the grays, the gray, the blue noses with the gray. And those were American pit bull terriers, right? Red nose, black nose, blue nose. And then uh, now, though, with the color scheme, the colors that they got now, you got the merles, which is a very exotic color. It's just if you guys don't know, if you see a, a like a Queensland healer, that's that would be considered a merle, right? Uh, 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 Australian shepherd. It's got some merles. Um you see the Frenchies with the Merles now, but the origin. So I don't know if they were introduced to back, you know, a while back into the bloodline too for that, maybe for the athleticism. I don't know. But uh, basically, Merle is a lot of times too, you'll see they'll have two different color eyes too. Um, that's because when the, the, the puppies were, you know, in the, it being developed inside the mother, uh, the genetics, the, the, you know, the, the genes were, uh, when it comes to, okay, this is the, when it, the, you know, this is all, uh, scientific stuff, right. When it comes to the dogs, but when everything's being decided, what color this puppy's going to be, the nose color, the eye color, you know, somewhere that the, 
diluted. It's a diluted gene. Um, so I'm learning about all that stuff. So if I'm making any mistakes as far as, far as anything I'm saying with that, people's correct me in the in in the uh, comment section. But um, yeah. So these dogs now they come. They made this name American Bully, which to be honest, I don't really like it. I don't like the name bully because it's not the word bully is associated with, you know, bullying kids, bullying people, making them do things they don't like, you know, but when they made the name bully, it was all specifically towards the color. I mean, excuse me, the, the look, the bully look, you know, they look a certain way, but they're not that way. And that's what everybody's got to push out here uh, for this breed that these dogs are great companion dogs. They're not vicious, mean dogs. Um, you know, especially if they're raised right, they're great companion dogs. This dog acts like I had her forever. She stays by me. She sits right next to me. Uh, she's already been in positions where a dog ran up on me and she got in front and, uh, she put herself in between me and the other dog. You know, the dog wasn't vicious, but still she didn't know that initially. And she got in position. So she's a good dog. Uh, she's got great temperament. Um, I even posted a short of her in the bath after I gave her a bath and she didn't, uh, she didn't get all crazy. She didn't like it. She, you know, she, I got her, um, I had to coach her through it and, you know, and, and pet her and all that, but she's a good dog just working on now peeing in the house. She's been peeing in the house. Uh, and it's only been one night that I kept her in the house. So, you know, I know that's, she's got to get used to it and I, we got to do our part. Well, I got to do my part by taking her out that, you know, you can't expect your dog to, uh, just know, just like your child doesn't just know, right? And then uh, you got to teach them, you got to show them, you know, but one thing is for sure, she waits for me already at this age. Um, and I've only had her, uh, you know, about five days. She's already showing that she's waiting for me to lead her. She knows I'm the boss, you know what I'm saying? So she's a very intelligent dog. Uh, great bloodline, like I mentioned, I got all her, the pictures of her uh, parents, pictures of her grandparents. Uh, she has a uh, uh, she does, I believe she carries the Merle gene, um, because her grandfather on her, her paternal, her maternal grandfather, his name is Orchata and he was Merle, is Merle. So I believe she carries the Merle gene. Uh, so I have some point here, I'm going to do a, uh, uh, a health check on her. Or I don't know exactly what they call it. Uh, if it's a DNA test or a health test, but anyways, it'll tell you if she carries the double, I believe it's two double D's uh, up, uppercase, and then that'll mean she carries the diluted gene, which would mean uh, Merle. Um, but yeah, these colors, people, check out some of these colors of these American bullies. They're they're off the hook, man. They got the the blue the blue tri. Um, they got the the Merle. You got the. Uh, you got the other one like a tri uh the tri uh. The tri, uh, what do they call it? The, the tri brown, uh, where it's got like three different browns. Uh, they got the, the lilac color. They got champagne now. They got all kinds of new colors that are just like, when you see the dogs, you're like, wow. And then especially if they got the nice head to go with it and the nice built, uh, neck and chest, uh, you know, and, and their bodies are right as far as the structure. They're, 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 uh, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, uh, that H, you know, that H, when you show the front stack, that means the front stacks when the dog's standing in front of you looking and they got that H shape with their chest and their legs, um, that wide, you know, that wideness, uh, but all their, yeah, you got to look at all their way they stand, their feet, all that stuff. Uh, and when you have a dog that's right, cause there's no, I mean, some people would say there's no perfect dog, but there's some that get real, real close. And if you guys look at some of these dogs, uh, I'm going to shout out a couple of uh, channels right now that are about the American bullies that I got uh, been watching. You got Fit Bully TV with Trevor and uh, Jamarcus and Hunter. And then also Stan is the dog trainer and he has his own channel too. It's called, uh, I believe it's called Iron Sharp. Iron Sharp Dog Training, but I, uh, I can't think of his name that he comments with right now. But anyways, you can find him through the Fit Bully TV channel. And they have two litters on the ground right now. They're about two weeks old, I believe. Um, one's a blue female, like mine, uh, named Maya. And he bred her to his boy, Eagle, who is a Merle. And they got a couple Merles in the litter. And then the other dog is uh, Zara. She's a tri-blue. Um, and uh, Eagle, that's Eagle's mom. So one dog has puppies. And 
she's the grandmother to the other litter. Um, and then they have, uh, they got about 10 dogs all together and his, he's more for athletics. He's not for size. He's not for their XL bullies, but he has a pocket bully named a blue and they bred blue to Zara. One of the mothers now, uh, who is a standard, um, and they have a couple puppies. They have three puppies, Tut, Bam Bam, and Cha Cha. And they're like six months old. And they're already bigger than the father, taller wise. So he took a, a pocket bully male to a standard female to try to take some traits from him. And obviously traits from her. And, you know, and it, and it worked. You know what I'm saying? It worked. But he still is honest about it. And he's like, I'm still working on it. We got a lot of work to do still. And so, so that's one aspect of it. The other channel I watch is called QBNA Kennels, which stands for Quality Bully Nation Kennels. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Raul, very helpful. Both these guys are helpful, but Raul, I believe he, he breaks everything down from every aspect, anything you could think of, he breaks down. And then if you got questions, you shoot them to him and he'll answer them back. But, um, those two channels, if you guys are interested, go to those channels, check them out. Uh, the one channel, uh, the fit bully has more to do with, uh, uh, quality of life, uh, exercising the dogs, uh, bite work, stuff like that. Uh, the other channel QBNA kennels is more uh, everything. They talk about everything. He don't really do the, ch uh, the training much. Cause he tells you straight up, I'm not a trainer, but he, he shows you there's dogs out in the yard, the way they, uh, intermingle with each other as a pack and so on and so forth. But they're both interesting channels. Um, and I get a lot of information from them and I've soaked up a lot of information already. And a lot of this stuff I knew already. I just didn't know the proper terminology like uh, uh, line breeding, inbreeding, uh, outcross breeding, all those different things. And then uh, so uh, I appreciate both those channels. So if you guys uh, are in American Bullies, go to those two channels, check them out again. One is called Fit Bully TV. And the other one is called QBNK. Uh, so go check those out. But I'll be doing more videos on the dogs, on the American Bullies. This is just my little intro video about the American Bullies. And uh, and I had, this is my, let's see, three. This is my fourth uh, bully, pit bulls, whatever you want to call it. Uh, of my life that are like was my dog dog. I've had more than that that weren't really my dog. They had purposes, uh, breeding purposes. I had some dogs before I was getting into that. Um, and I had like a shorter female, which now I know is called a pocket. Um, we didn't use those terms back then, bullies. We didn't, it was just, we would say pits. You know what I mean? But apparently the American bullies been around for 30 years now. So now thinking back on it, these were bullies all along. And I just, cause the mo most of the ones I had were bigger ones. You know, it's just, we, I, we didn't use that term over here. So, you know, it is what it is, but now, so this is my fourth dog pit bull slash bully. That was my dog dog, you know, really meant something to me. Uh, you guys heard me tell stories about some of the other ones. Um, so, um, she's back there sleeping now. So see her, she snores too, boy. So, so she has that thing around her neck because again, she had her ears some work done in her ears and I don't want her scratching because she does, she'll rip the stitches out. So that's where we're at. People probably going to grab some lunch right now. And then, uh, I got to run to the DMV, the department of motor vehicles and, um, make appointment for my daughter, the doctors. And, and so I'm gonna go ahead and tap out and let you guys go for now. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, Anybody, again, if I said anything here that you feel that I didn't say correctly or I misspoke about something or I mispronounced something or I used the wrong word for something, please uh, uh, correct me. And uh, and with that being said, Big Lou, tapping on out, everybody. Today, Oh, today's Friday. Be sure to always be responsible, people. You guys know my message. If you're going to be doing any drinking, make sure you got your, you know, everything's in order. Make sure you got a designated driver. Make sure you got the Uber, your Uber account, all that set up. Uh, call a taxi if you have to. And if it gets down to you can't get any of those, make just walk. You know what I'm saying? Walk because it's not worth you catching a, a DUI, 
you know, screwing up your freaking driver license and have to do all that extra paying money and, and going to jail and all that stuff. Or God forbid something worse happens. So be responsible, people. That being said, Big Lou really tapping out this time.